Hi, it's Mark Owen from Moose Marketing PR, the editor of Punchline Magazine. Welcome to Punchline Talks. Today on Westgate Street in Gloucester. Down there is Gloucester Cathedral. Over there is College Court. Just down the other side of the road is McDonald's and the Cross. And here, standing right in front of 42 Westgate Street, is Claire Dovey Evans. Hello, Claire. Very nice to see you Hi. again. Wow, what a fantastic building. And we're going to go and see you. So, why have you brought me here? What's this building? This building is a 15th century. Um, Tudor building and basically we've been restoring it under the Cathedral Quarter project. When we took it on it was empty for 10 years, at risk um, and really in danger of collapse and we've managed to salvage it and restore it as part of the Cathedral Quarter project. I mean it is quite magnificent isn't it when you come in. So you can't imagine that 500 years ago, 500 years of history here in this building, what people were wearing, what they were doing, what they were cooking. Well, Just awesome. We know it was a butcher's when it was first um, built in that in the 16th century, um, and this area of the city was known as for the butcher butchers because the uh, bull lane next door. Um, that's where they used to bring the bulls down for slaughter in the markets. Wow. Okay. And th th what was this room then? What was what, what was this building itself? Well, this section we think was added later. Uh, we've been working with Historic England and their researcher Rebecca Lane has been looking into all of this. So that front section was built around 1545, 1560 we think and then this was added on in the later uh, 16th century um, and probably would have extended that way as well but over time it's kind of um, shrunk a little bit and then this section here would have actually been in the open air. So wow. this section would have been um, not part of the, the original building, it would have been a little lane and it's been covered over at some point in the past. Well, it so is a really, tiny, tiny it, building. Everything. Yeah, it's really, really small. It's one of the most smallest buildings actually on Westgate Street, isn't it? It is, yes, but it'll be a fantastic unit for somebody at some point in its future when the, when the works are completed. It will be a fantastic unit. So now there's uh, it's around £2 million investment, isn't it, from is it Historic England that have put the money in to restore all these buildings around here? That's right. So Historic England have given us £1.9 million. Uh, the, Obviously, the property owners are chipping into that as well, and um, city council is chipping in. So we've got a, a good pot of money to be able to restore the buildings on this street, and we're actually nearing completion now. How many buildings have we done so far? Uh, Twelve altogether on the street, wow. and then we're doing smaller, sort of slightly smaller repair and frontage grants at the moment, and that will be the end of the project then. Okay. Well, now what? So I'm really excited about is we've got this cellar down here. So we did have a little scoop before, and it is very dark. Yeah, it's quite a long way down. <laughs> and like all these old buildings, they, they don't do the stairs straight. They're all very wiggly wonky. And when I came down earlier, I came on my own. Very spooky. I don't like spooky buildings, as most people watch these videos know. So what do you reckon this was then, Claire? Well, this is your typical storage cellar. Uh, most of the, the buildings on Westgate Street, the historic ones, would have had these kind of cellars underneath, underneath them. Um, obviously, you know about the one under the fleece, the famous uh, 12th century undercroft. This is a much later one, uh, possibly added later. Uh, after the Tudor building was, was here, it was actually added afterwards, so quite an interesting fact in itself, really. Well, that's it's right, and we both of us have to crouch. So, I know I'm five foot six, 170, 170 meters tall, and uh, it's just about touching the top of my hair, or unless that's cobwebs, or, <laughs> it could be or, or someone's stroking the top of my hair, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, right, let's get out of here. And then it's three floors as well, so we're going to go and have a quick scoot up there as well. Okay, right, if you want to lead the way, please, Claire. Yeah, we're going up to the first floor, which is watched the floor down a little bit uh, wonky. So how many people do you reckon lived in here? Is there any sort of historical documents? Um, yes, we've got quite a lot of research done by Historic England, our colleagues there. Um, I'm not exactly sure ex how many, but when we come to the later period, we can look at census records and find out who was here. And yes, you know, it's amazing how many people were crammed into these small buildings, really. Um, but they were pretty much used as we sort of would use them now as a retail unit with um, you know dwelling rooms up above. Well, they've done a, they've done a great job restoring it, isn't it? You can see all the sort of padding and you know cladding and everything else. Everything's got to be yeah, glued so back into place. The roof is now fully insulated. Uh, just needs finishing off. You can see sections of the timbers. We've kept the original timbers, and we've added new structural timbers to make sure the building stands up. If I show you this beam in particular here, you can see that beam runs into absolutely nothing. It's rotted away completely there. Wow, yeah. So we've had to put a completely new structure above to keep it, but we're keeping that original timber work because that's part of the original structure. And like all these things, you know, every single thing costs money. It does. Uh, you know, yeah. what you think, starting off, your, like anything, any kind of sort of form of construction at the moment, prices have just been going up and up and up. Yeah, yeah. 
But this is the only way we're going to save these buildings for the future of the city. Exactly so, and you know, with, with those grants being running, we were able to salvage, salvage this building. I don't think it would have been salvaged without the, the grant scheme, to be perfectly honest with you. It would have been beyond the, re, you know, the, the financial realms of most owners. So here we are now, we're on the very, very top floor. It's a, it's a small room, it's around five foot by three foot or something like that. We're both out of breath. Well, I'm out of breath <laughs> anyway. Because the steps are quite steep, they aren't are they? quite steep, quite difficult to negotiate as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see this is going to be a fantastic room. Probably a bedroom in, in the, the completed flat once it's done. You can see it's all been lined with wood wall board, which is insulating as well. That's going to be lime plastered over eventually. And yeah, it'll be a fantastic view out to West Coast Street for whoever ends up sleeping up here. And um, who's doing the development? So the contractor here is a chap called Jake Etherton, who's a conservation contractor, um, very, very good con conservation contractor, uh, who's worked on a couple of other projects for us as well on this project. Um, and yeah, he's uh, done a really good job here. Wow. And this could be the view from someone's bedroom. And there's the magnificent Gloucester Cathedral. And the other cathedral of the city, King's Home, is just on the other side. Thanks, Claire. You're welcome. Thanks very Thanks much for coming round. Showing us Punchline Talks. Thank You're you. Bye-bye.